you're going to write your own programs for the Sinclair Spectrum, then there are various things you'll need to know. Now, obviously, you'll have to decide what sort of programs you want to write. Games or educational programs, perhaps. You'll also need to know what the machine is capable of. Colors, text, graphics, calculations. And you'll also need to know a certain amount about the basic language which is the way that you'll be giving your instructions to the machine. Now, if you've been through the Horizons cassette that came with the machine, then you'll have seen some examples of what it can do. You've seen examples of text and of graphics, colors and of sound. So what we're going to do during this videotape is discuss the basic language, the different statements that you're going to be using in order to get the machine to do what you want it to. Now, we won't have time to tell you everything about every statement. So you're going to depend quite heavily on the instruction book that came with the machine. We'll be able to discuss certain of the statements and give you ideas as to how to use them. But we'll always rely on you to go back to the manual to check out the details and learn those statements thoroughly. So, before we start looking at the basic language, let's take a quick look at the hardware that you're going to be using, the different parts of your computer system. Now, you'll spend most of your time looking at the screen, and so we should look at the different parts that there are in front of you. Around the edge, we have the border, which in fact is in two parts, because these two lines, which are invisible at the moment, are known as the input area. And any information that you type into the computer will go in and appear on the screen in this position. And this input area is also used by the computer to send you certain messages. Now the part that I have colored blue here is the paper. And that's the main part of the screen for displaying information. And on the paper, the information that is displayed is displayed in ink. So when we talk about the color of the paper, or the color of the border, or the color of the ink, we're always talking about these parts of the information on the screen. Now you'll be depending upon your cassette recorder player for copying programs into the computer and saving the programs that you write, and also perhaps saving data information that will be used by those programs. Now, I'm using a special cassette player that's designed to be used with computers, but you may find that one you have already will work quite well. And if you've been through the Horizon tape, then you will know about setting the volume level so that it works correctly with your computer. Now, your main communication with the computer is going to be through the keyboard. And at first sight, it may look a little daunting because every key on the keyboard seems to have five or six different meanings depending on whether you read red or green or white. But it's really quite straightforward as long as you approach it carefully. Let's look at one specific key and look at the legends that are written on that key. Now the B key has the word border underneath it. Above it, the word bin. Below it, the word bright. And also printed in red on the key itself is a star. Now, at different times, that key can produce any of those effects. In order to know which one it will produce when you press it, we need to look at the cursor that you see at the bottom of the screen. The flashing K cursor tells us that BASIC is expecting a keyword. The keyword that's written on the B key is the word border. And if we press the B key when our cursor is flashing K, we'll get the word border. Notice that now our cursor has changed. It's no longer a flashing K, 
put a flashing L. This means that BASIC is no longer expecting us to type a keyword, but is expecting a letter or a number. If we press the B key again, we get a small b. We get the letter that is printed on the key. Now that is the start of a basic instruction. It's a border instruction. In fact, it's not valid. And if we press enter now, we'll see what basic does when we try to give it an invalid instruction. There's the enter key. We get a message, variable not found. For the moment, we'll ignore that message. We'll press enter again, which will give us our K back again. Well, let's put in a valid border instruction and see how it works. Pressing B again gives us border. And this time, we're going to follow it with a number because you'll see that the numbers at the top of the keyboard have colors written above them. Let's try a green border. Green is above the 4 key. So if we say border 4 and then press enter again, we have an immediate result. The border has gone green. If we didn't like green, we could use another border instruction, border white or seven. Pressing enter immediately returns us to our white border.